I only turned pro at 25. I think it was a week before my 25th birthday, I had my first fight. And I knew that I had a lot of, I had a lot of time to, to, to catch up on because I knew I was pushing it in, in pro boxing terms at 25 starting out. So it was kind of, with me, it was about working hard, really putting the graft in and having no regrets. Martin Murray started boxing at just seven years old, started sparring at age 10, and had a successful amateur career before turning pro in 2007. In that time, he's had 44 professional fights to date, he's won a range of domestic, European, and interim titles, and competed at the highest level of boxing, including challenging for a world title on four different occasions. Martin is currently training for his next fight, which is just one week away. And I spent some time with him behind the scenes to find out more about how he trains and prepares. So I've just arrived at the VIP boxing gym in Astley, and to be honest, I wasn't 100% sure I was actually in the right place. It's in a very inconspicuous spot in a very industrial part of town, but I've just seen a sign saying boxing gym entrance, so I'm going to see if I can head inside. Once I was through the main door, a more familiar boxing environment was revealed. This isn't like your typical branded or chain gym that has lots of creature comforts in mind. It's a very simple, no thrills, but practical gym designed for putting in some serious physical work. I met up with Martin as he was starting his warm up. So is this a typical warm up for you? Well, yeah, like yeah. the, with me now we'll be fighting next week. And it's just about a warm up here, it's obviously done a bit of skipping. I won't do my little one here. Just fat burning, you know, because I'm weighing in next week, so. Like, my me, me workload as in, like, fat burning runs and stuff like that. I get more of them, but the intense work now, I start tapering off with it, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm trying to save it all for next week. Starting from the basics. Yeah. What does a typical training day look like for you? How is it structured? When you're starting out, you need. You need to get all that work in the bank, so you could be training like three, four times a day up at crack of dawn training. Um, and then you're training, when it was all of us, it was like getting there for nine, uh, half nine. Um, and then you strength the conditioning, then there was physio. Um, training at night, it was, it was non-stop. But now, I just always try and get the, the good bit of grafting, three minutes worth of graft, minutes rest. Um, and you train in those cycles, so you train three minute bursts? Yeah. Right. Years ago, all of us, we used to, we did everything. We did three and a half minute rounds with 30 seconds rest. Um, yeah, four minute rounds with a minute's rest. We've done it all, but just the three minutes with, with a minute's rest. So that's kind of the cycle that I work on. Does that, does that help with your natural kind of internal clock when you're actually fighting as well, if you're used to those three minute bursts? I mean, it, it, it does. Like, we'll have a thing in the... Uh, Say if we're doing like tempo bag work, so Jamie will go like one, and one's kind of like where you're having a breather, um, dodging, defending, getting it back, and then two is like where you're counter punching, yeah, and then three is like where you go all out. So then you shot one, two, three, one. You know what I mean? So when you're kind of in a in a fight, you could shout one, and you'll kind of know what the one means, and two and three, and, and so on. But um, but yeah, it does, but naturally now, through the years of doing it, my body's built on like kind of like a three minute, three minute round and a minute's rest. So I kind of know when the three rounds is nearly up, unless you're in an hard fight and it means like 10 minutes, but <laughs> um, and same, same with recovery with a minute. Last week now, so that's kind of like me last hard session meal. I'll have a few, a few sharpeners. Uh, next week, but that was where we kind of like went at it, you know what I mean? Three minute rounds, minute stress, so it was uh, a real good pace, mate, and yeah, feeling good. Looking forward to it now, mate, looking forward to it fighting. And you get Nigel's ribs on purpose, or? <laughs> <laughs> I always ask him, where does he want it? Because you change it from round here, or to up here, or so usually on purpose. <laughs> 
So I think something that might get lost in translation in this video is the power of those punches. It's one thing seeing them on video, but when you're right here and you're seeing them do the, uh, the pad work and the drills and you hear the noise that those punches make when they connect, I can tell you I would not want to get hit by any of those. <laughs> Over the years, I've done that many different kinds of weights. Um, like getting weights, getting big, doing kind of like bodybuilding training. Then I've done specific weights, and that's kind of as as I've gone on, as I've got more knowledgeable, and who I've worked with, I've I've, I've realised who actually was good and knew what they was on about. You know what I mean? Um, I think it's um, when you're doing weights, um, strength and conditioning, that, that's the idea. It, it, it's conditioning to your sport. But I just do my own now. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I've, I've, like I said, I've worked with quite a few strength and conditioners. And, you know, there's been a lot of it where, where it's been quite time consuming yeah. for me. But, um, but I mean, I, would, I want to change it out. But now I just do it, do it on my own. And I kind of know what I need to do, what my body needs, do you know what I mean? So if you've been a pro for 12 years, you probably yeah. know pretty much what yeah, you Yeah, yeah, I know my body better than, better than anybody, so I know now what what um, what I need need to do, what strength and con conditionings and weight training is right and what's wrong. So how many different coaches do you actually have? I mean, you used to have a strength coach, so you now train yourself. Yeah. I saw you training with the uh, with the pads a second ago, doing your, your drills. Yeah. How many actual coaches do you have then? Uh, just Jamie and Nigel. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah Do you Jamie still have Nigel. a nutritionist as well? No, I've worked with nutritionists. Like, again. Um, you know your body pretty know well. Know my body, yeah. Yeah. Know my body. Know what I, what I can have, what I can't have, when I can and can't have it. Right. I've done everything, honestly. I've done working round the clock with, with uh, physios, with strength and conditioners, with nutritionists. Taking body fats twice a week. Just, really? just yeah. It's been intense from that side of things. I've done, I've done it all, but now I don't. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't. I don't need it all. I'm not saying that I know, I know everything. I just know that I know know my body. You yeah. know what I mean? So now we're doing the conditioning myself and just train here with with Jamie and Nigel. Right. I was looking at some of your older videos of you training, yeah. and it looked like you were training like a madman, just like non-stop. Yeah. And then today it looked a lot more strategic. Yeah. Yeah. It was. It was. Uh, yeah, a lot back. So it was, I was like a man possessed. Uh, I was like a man possessed. So kind of going into my 13th year as a pro, starting. Um, oh, this is my 12th. I don't know what it's going to do. I think it's the 13th. I think you've done 12. I think it's the 13th. Yeah, there you go. Thank yeah, yeah. you. So yeah. I'm just starting my 13th year, you yeah. know. And I think the fact that I'm still going after 13 years. Um, Not many people can say that. Yeah, it, and still educating myself with it. I think it's the fact that I'd done all that work previously, so I don't regret it, but I did use train like a, like a man possessed. Right. Uh, used to go in the gym, throw my bag in, didn't talk to anybody, <laughs> said hello, that was that. Got changed, did my session, said goodbye, and then I'd be gone. It's really interesting because with you having fought for like world titles and things, I, I always kind of imagined it was going to be like in Rocky IV, where there's like scientists with clipboards standing around you and like nodding their heads and stuff. <laughs> Whereas actually, it seems like you do a lot of it almost by intuition and experience. Yeah, really. I, yeah, I do now. Right. But like, say for example, when when um, when I fought Golovkin and the training camp for Golovkin, I went to Johannesburg. Oh, right. uh, you know, altitude training before that fight. We went there for five week. Yeah. And. We took a proper nutritionist over with us who, who sorted out all our meals, same with the conditioning, doing the body fats. And it was obviously not Rocky Ford type <laughs> thing, but it was very, very scientific like that. Right. Um, and did you like that approach or did you prefer what you do now? Definitely prefer what I do now. Right. Yeah. I heard you had some pretty intense spars with Jimmy Moore oh. many years ago when yeah, you were at Oliver's yeah. gym as well. Yeah. Oh, they, yeah, they, they was ever, they was hard. <laughs> Um, it was one of them with me where I've always, every time I've got in with somebody, I've always felt all right. I've always been able to cope, you know what I mean? I've thought, 
no matter at what level they are, sparred everybody, but I've always managed to be all right. Yeah. So I thought in my head, I thought I'll be all right with Jamie, even though he's a pro. And this was me just as I just first turned over. But prior to that, I'd sparred many pros and been all right. So I thought with Jamie, I'd, I'd, I'd be all right. <laughs> Punched me head in. Really? Oh, proper, honestly. And he, he, he took me to school. And when, <laughs> after I sparred with him, I, I kind of knew that and I've got to do what he does I've got to incorporate a bit, a bit of his fighting style into my own keep my own style as well uh, and that's what Oliver did he, he got me fighting on the inside he got me working the body um, he got me pressuring people um, but Jamie was very clever he, Jamie was amazing at educated pressure he, it's like he was there but he wasn't but we had some some heavy spars but as time got on Obviously, I got better, um, and the sp the spars. I mean, he, he did. He <laughs> gave me some hard times, <laughs> um, but then they started getting a little, you know, a bit more even. Mm -hmm. And there were some days where Oliver said, uh, "Like, lock the gym. You two were sparring, so nobody was in then. It was just me and Jay and Oliver, and we proper went at it. <laughs> and there was there, there was heavy, heavy spars, but." They only stood me in good stead. Oh, really? I've got all, uh, yeah, I've got a lot to thank uh, Jamie, and, Jamie and Oliver, uh, Oliver for. I learned, I learned a hell a lot, uh, hell of a lot off, off them both. And if there's any kind of aspiring boxers watching this video now, or amateurs that are thinking about turning pro, what advice would you give them from a training perspective? Work hard. Work hard. Oh, just work hard. Yeah, that just go in the gym and graft. Mm -hmm. um, I look back, maybe overtrained a lot. Um, a lot. I think I did, but I wouldn't change it. Just go in the graft and work hard and just dedicate it, uh, dedicate to the sport. So I've just been speaking to Martin about his training and what interested me the most is that he seems to do everything pretty much himself and he bases what he does a lot on experience and on intuition. Now the internet would have you believe that you need all these really sophisticated coaches and approaches to training, but he just focuses on hard graft, consistency, and just listening to his own body. Martin's next fight is on the 15th of November in Liverpool, and a victory should set him up for bigger opportunities and fights in 2020.